Despite our weaknesses, our failures, God still listens to us. He hears our cry. He responds to everything we ask of him. But sometimes God wants us to be patient. But this is not sometimes. Every time God Over. wants us to be patient. And trust him with everything. Yes. At his own time. Things will begin to fall in yes. There's something I've been struggling with. And it's about the family of God. Now, many a times the devil comes in and scatters things and be like, oh, I remember there was this song we I learned it so long ago. I will find time to teach the church. Since we are his of the Father, we are joined us with the Son, we are children of his kingdom, we are family, we are one, we are one. Amen. Father Lord, we ask that you please speak so to us. Data, can you sing one Grant us this understanding that we are one. Irrespective of who we are. What we are. Where we come from. What we have achieved in life. We still all belong to you. We are your family. In help us to abide in this. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We. Our family. Now, maybe when is here family? Can she move this young What comes to your mind? It goes on when you need. Immediately, you want to talk about your brothers and oh, sisters. Oh, we talk about From the same father and the same mother. Oh, you talk about your father's family. You talk about your mother's family. And then you begin to connect from one extension to the other. But there is another family. That you are not, you are related by blood, but not the physical, the, the, the one that was given back by your parents. And that is the family of God. Now, when you talk about the family of God, and that is the family of God. Irrespective of the color of the skin, we are all connected by one thing. And that is the redness of our blood. Irrespective of the, the, the shape of our faces. Whether you are, you are big or you are slim. Whether you are fat or you are short. There is something that connects all of us. And that is the redness of our blood. We are all from one blood. From one period. Every one of us will trace everything who we are back to Adam and Eve. Even after God destroyed the, the world, we will see trace everything back to, to Noah. And when sin took over the world, 
We trace everything back to Jesus. There is no how we do our genealogy. We always aim at the doorstep of God Almighty. Men may say, oh, I don't belong to that family. I'm not from that tribe. No, 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 my kingsman. But when you come to the presence of God, there is no tribe. There is no kingsman. We are all one in the Christ. That's why the text says in John chapter 17, verses 20 and 21. When Jesus was praying, yes, then he was about to leave the world. And he was praying in the garden of Gethsemane. He said, Lord, I do not pray for these alone. In other words, his family. The disciples. There was a time he was ministering. People told him, Oh, your father and your brothers and sisters are outside. And he said, This one's here. Listening to me, they are my family, they are my brothers, they are my sisters. Not that he rejected those ones, but he extended the family beyond what we say. So that was why when he was praying, he said, I do not pray for these alone, but also for those who will believe in me. That they all may be one. As you, Father, you are in me, and I in you. That they also may be one in us. That the world may believe that you say yes. one. What does that mean? Our togetherness. Our togetherness. Means we belong to God. Irrespective of our differences. You know, everything may change. Everything may change. But we start and end with family. Every other thing may change. But we start. And end with family. Family have definite purposes. If you show up here, you give me the young I can adjust this. Yeah. I want him to bring the remote. So okay. Yeah. Family have definite purposes. For a reason, God created family. And it has become a test lab for the world. In other words, the family is a place where we learn to cooperate and communicate. It's a place where we learn to cooperate and communicate. No, the family is a place where people see love. Give it to me. Sorry for the break in transmission. If it is back in my country, you say it is due to power failure because they can take power anytime. <laughs> So, this family is a place where we see love. We see honesty. And then, we see forgiveness being practiced. That is the place for the family. It's a place where frankness is being mentioned. 
you know, in, in, in my own place, we, there's something what you said, if two brothers or sisters go to a room and they come out and they are laughing. He said the two of them have just gone in to deceive themselves. But when you see them come out of the room, and one goes south and the other goes west. They have met as a family. They have had some frank talk. Yes. They have disagreed to go away. They have disagreed to go away from each other. To go away. Uh -huh. They have disagreed to go away. Uh -huh. You know that maybe they have challenged themselves. No, come on, go. Bafugurus, Bafu, 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 because they realize, oh, Bafu, 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 and then they come back to themselves. That is family. And then one other thing we need to understand is that the family is an extension of heaven. No extension of heaven. Yeah. In other words, heaven is down. Families are not only for this world. They are for the world to come. So the Holy Spirit leads the family to see truth here. So that we understand that we are the family of God. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 5 says that his unchanging plan has always been to adopt us into his family. Bringing us to himself in through his And this gives God great pleasure. Yes. This gives God great pleasure. You know, you are not formed to be by yourself. You are formed for God's family. You were desired to be a family and created to be part of it. You know, God desired a family. So, He created you and I. To be part of that family. That's why you are existing. You know, the entire Bible is a story of God building a family who loves Him. A family that honors Him. A family that will reign with Him forever. God had always existed in a loving relationship. God has never been lonely. He didn't need a family. But he just desired one. Okay, okay so he devised a plan to create us. To bring us into that family. And the, not this. To share with us everything he has. See, when you walk away from God, you are missing so many things. What you are going out there to look for. Belong to God. He owns them. So he created you to be part of his family. So that you can enjoy what he has. That's why he made us. If you listen, the Bible says it was in James 1 verse 18, the Living Bible Translation. 
It says it was a happy day for God when He gave us our new lives. Through the truth of His word. And we became, as it were, the first children in this new family. That is through Christ. Amen. We became the first children in this family. No, God doesn't have grandchildren. He only has children. It's we women who have grandchildren, great grandchildren. God has only children. No matter how old, no matter how young. You are a child of God. We all have equal access to the property of God. You know, in human family, say this is the eldest. And he has a part, a share has been the first born. And then every other will start struggling for the rest. But in, within the family of God, you do, everybody has equal share. What belongs, what you can take is what I can take. You can't take more than I can take. Heaven's blessings is sheer equality. Depending on the level of your faith of what you can take. Your faith determines what you receive in the family. So how strong or how big or how firm is your faith in God? When we place our faith in God, God becomes our Father. We become His children. Other believers become our brothers and sisters. And the church becomes our spiritual family. In other words, the family of God includes believers in the past, in the present, and in the future. God's family. The property of God. I wish we understand what how we stand in the, in the presence of God. I pray we, we, we understand the access we have to the things that God knows. If we all have that understanding, the level of our stress will reduce. The level of our stress the, the anxiety in our hearts will go down. That everything you need is just a need, a prayer, a way. Just a prayer, a way. All you need to do is go to your father. Sometimes we don't even need to need. Walking on the way. And something strikes your mind that you need and it's very it's like emergency. Right on the way as you were walking. You communicate with your father. That is the pressure on me. I need to get this off my mind. And once you tell him, Begin to thank him that he has done what you have had of him and begin to rejoice in him. Even when you go back to talk to him on it, give it to him back to him in a prayer of thanksgiving. And you see God working. I'm talking to you from experience. I'm not telling you theories. I'm telling you from experience. Experience. Because that's what matters. You know, John, 1 John chapter 1, verse 1 says, What we have seen, what we have touched, what we have experienced. He was, not, he was not telling stories that are not true. He was telling stories that are not true. He was telling stories that are not true. 
Not at all. He was not telling stories that are not true. Now, we are not even in the Arab world. Every woman being was created in the in in, in the, as a child of God. But the only woman who child was not shorty man. And the only way to be as a fat fat be belong to that family. Can you go and 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 You see, the first thing is you were born into a family. When you got born into that family, you became part of that human family. But for you to be part of the family of God, that was why Jesus said in John chapter 3, verse 3 and verse 5. John chapter 3, verse 3 and verse 5. The first one says you must be born again. For you to see the Then verse 5 says you must be born of the water and of the spirit. For you to enter into the kingdom. There are so many in the family. They have been born again. So they can see the kingdom. But they have no hope of entering the kingdom. Because they have not been born of the spirit. Some have been born of the water. So because that puts their name in the church record book. But the church record book is not the book of life. That is not, is not a, an access to the kingdom of God. You must be born of the spirit. For your name to be fully recorded. As a family member in heaven, God is inviting you because you belong to Him by faith. Trust Him. There are benefits of being in, God, in, in, in God's family. Because the moment you are spiritually born, when the moment you are spiritually born, you are giving an outstanding birthday gift. Here, here in this country, when a woman is about to give birth, you go and do what? You go to the baby shower. I don't know how many times you do baby shower in Africa. Now, go to Africa, go to baby shower. You go and do baby shower. To go to the baby shower. And then, because we are preparing for the child that is coming, <laughs> the moment the child comes into the world, <laughs> the child has adopts the family name immediately. <laughs> the child has access to family privileges. <laughs> family intimacy. <laughs> family inheritance. <laughs> The Bible says the moment you are born again, born of the water, born of the spirit, your name changes. Your name, you become a child of God. In other words, when people see you, they say, oh, this is a child of God. Because You belong to where are you go or who was so they do not attach you to your family name anymore. Now go on your quick is in that you young one you can see. But adventure the person misbehaves. Oh, okay, you can't get with Fatanami. You say, but he says he's a child of God. But I'm gonna tell you one more Christo. Never one man away man. Is that it? See, come on, say what he says is a Christian. Because they are attached the family name of heaven. Because that is what you have told the world you are. A child of the king of heaven. In my place. When a child of a king. When is a first class king. You say when you see the child of a first class king. You see majesty. You see wholesomeness. It doesn't just walk, or she doesn't just walk anyhow. Now the fuck you do come around him, you have servants following. Even till today. No who How much more when you are the child of the heavenly king? No, I mean it's never for the church over here. The creator of the universe. The one who speaks things and things begin to happen. Oh, 
You don't know the privilege you have. You don't understand what God has placed you. If you read 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 and 4, anytime I go to God, that is always my memory verse to me. It says everything that I need for life and for godliness is already made available. So, how, but the problem we have is this. How do I get those things? That's not your problem. You know, a child, a little child growing up does not worry how food will come into the house. Does not worry how clothes will come to him. All the child knows is when his child is hungry. If he sees either the father or the mother, the child cries and says, hey! I hit up, 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 even a suckling baby, the way the child is hungry, no man won't look at the mom and there's a kind of cry at the mother on the side. When we go to God, what kind of cry? How do you cry to God? Many, many times when we go to our God, our Father in heaven, we go there to complain to Him about everything to we have done. We complain of this, of that, of this, of that. At the end of the day, we come after complaining, we fail to ask Him what we need. We complain and we go away. If we go back to complain, we go away. God is not asking my prayer. He's 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 not asking if you read John 16, verse 24, no, so you ask so that your joy may be complete. Thank God. Just tell him in straight language. When I was, when I needed a car, I told God that I needed a car as a gift. That was my prayer. That was my gift. That was my That was my prayer. That was my prayer. That was my prayer to God. And it came that way. And even when by getting it, the car got, people look at it and said, I got it for a thousand dollars. He said, no. About you can't be sure. 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 With 143,000 miles. Hey, no, one of my friends saw it yesterday and said, Hey, boy, you have a, you have a, good, you have a good car. I said, Yeah, it's a gift. I said, How much? I said, 1,000. So my friend, get out. Get my friend, get out from there. I can you get this one for one thousand. I said, well, that if you don't believe it, that's the truth. Tell God what you do. Tell God what you do. Tell him what you do. Tell him what you do. Tell him what you do. Don't get weary of telling him what you need. I am a member of his family. He is a member of his family. He is a member of his family. He is a member of his family. No, let me put it this way. His duty is to provide for me. And do you know what? He did it right from the foundation of the world. Before he ever made me. Before he ever made anything called human being. He had put in place everything that he ever made. That is God. So when we came along, He only told us, take care of everything.
I wasn't born to sweat. I wasn't born to labor. I wasn't born to struggle. It is sin that brought labor. That brought it is sin that brought pain. That we have to struggle and scramble for what we need. In the beginning, it was not so. so God is calling you and I back to that beginning. If you don't understand it, when God created man, He told man, Genesis 27, 28, Be fruitful. And multiply. fruitful. Subdue the earth. In other words, have dominion over everything. In the waters, in the ground, in the earth. But today, the reverse is the case. The created things are not controlling us. We don't have control anymore. Because we don't exercise our authority. It has to do with your mind. I'm a child of God. It has to do with my mind. Do I even believe it? It has to do with that man. Belonging to the family of God is more important than a physical family. Listen to Ephesians 2 verse 19. It says, are members of God's very own family, citizens of God's country, and you belong in God's household with every other Christian. And Timothy, first Timothy three verse fifteen says that God's family is the church of the living God. Yeah, uh, 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 just, just interpret it because time is gone. So, so, um, God, God, the church of the God, the church of the living God, God the, the pillar and foundation of truth. So you are called to belong, not just to believe. Some people believe, but they do not belong. But you are called to believe, and you are called to belong. If you believe, and you do not belong, you miss everything. That is the truth. The church is God's agenda. That's why Jesus says, I will build my church. And the powers of hell will not conquer. The church of God cannot be destroyed. It will exist in the The church of God will outlive this universe. And so will our role in it. Because some people say, oh, I don't need the church. I'm good by myself, I don't need the church. That person is either arrogant or ignorant. When you say you don't need the church, you are either arrogant or ignorant. Because the church is so significant that Jesus died for it. Koko, yes, we are He loved the church, he gave his life for it. Yakunzi Torero and Tanya Rosimabke. Life is all about love. Obozima, Buri, Norukon, Bujeno, Koba, Murkondo. Galatians 6 10 says, If you have the opportunity to do good, you have the opportunity to help anyone. Give special attention to those 
in the family of believers. God is so particular about you. Romans 12 verse 5. Says, in Christ we are many from one body. We who are many from one body. But each member belongs to all the other. So in the church of God, we are not an island. We are just one family. So you and I, we need a church family. The church family identifies you as true as a genuine believer. That's what John 13 verse 35 says. Then a church family moves you out of self-centeredness and isolation. That's, you read that in 1 Corinthians 12 verse 26. The church family always look for your common for the common good of everyone. And then the church family helps you to develop spiritual muscle. Uh, the power to fight. Not to fight one another. But to team up together to fight the common enemy. And that common enemy is the devil. When we team up together as a family, the devil doesn't have a place. And also, the church family has to share in the mission of God. That is getting the message of God to the world. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. The church family helps you from backsliding. Always, always looking out for you. Uh, always looking out for you. That is Hebrews 3, verse 13. As a family of God. Our life is meant to be shared. Each Colossians 3 verse 15 says, that each one of you is part of the body of Christ. And listen to this. Since you were chosen. So you are not here by accident. God says you were chosen. To live together in peace. There is Psalm 133, verse 1. How wonderful it is. How pleasant for God's people to live together in peace. And so when you belong to the family of God, there must be commitment. Acts chapter 2 verse 42. The Bible says that the apostles committed themselves to the teaching. The, the disciples committed themselves to the teaching of the apostles. Their life together, common meal, and prayers together. You are joined through the peace, through peace from the Holy Spirit. Amen. So let's make every effort to live like this. Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. Says, if you've gotten anything at all out of following Christ. If his love has made any difference in your life. Is my grammar too high? Uh, no, I get it, but I was. Nimrukundo, if his love has made any difference in your life, Nimrukundo, if it it he no karwa kose mo busi magawa. If being in a community of the spirit means anything to you, Niva ukuba ukumu kawera kuku fiti yakama. Agree with each other. Mogo mbago hos. Love each other. Mokonda. Listen to this last phrase. Omva akagahe ukanga. Be deep. Spirited friends. Move our Christo Ninshuti Bjimbitse Mubyumoka. Be deep spirited 
friends. Mwe inshuti zimbitse mu byumwuka. Our ability to get along is the mark of our spiritual maturity. Kwihuza mu byumwuka ni bigaragaza ko turakuze mu byumwuka because that's what makes us family. Koko ibyo nibyo bituma tubumenye umuryango. We have broken relationship. Niba a isano ryanyu ricika within the household of God. Umubano wanyu kwa wangirika mu onzo y'Imana. Get time to talk to each other. Mwakwegerana mukabiganiraho. James chapter 4 verse 1 and 2. Muri Yakobo igice cya kana ku murongo wa 22. Always take initiative. Mu Mu bigira mu ruhare. Sympathize with each other's feelings. Mwumvi mibabara ya wajenzi wanyo. Confess your own part of the conflict. Kandi musabani mbabazi zija hajanyo. Attack the problem, not the person. Mwurwanyi chini mwurika kurwanyi. Kwirwanyi mwurika kurwanyi mwurika kurwanyi mwurika. Operate as much as possible. Mwujiraje ze kumbi kana mwurika kose. Emphasize reconciliation, not resolution. Mwuhu uze mwurika kuita ando kanyani. Focus on what we have in common, not our differences. Choose to encourage that criticize. And refuse to listen to gossip. As I close. Remember, we are family. Unity is the soul of fellowship. When we destroy this unity, it's like ripping the heart out of the Christ. Because unity is the essence, the core of how God intends for us to experience life together. Our supreme model is the Trinity. The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Unified as one. And leading us into this. That's why Jesus spent that agonizing hour in prayer. God, I'm not praying for only this one. If you did division among the disciples, that their heart and mind were not together. But he prayed for them to come together as one. And if by extension, he prayed for you and I. Uh, we are gathering together like this hour. And and we all should be together as a God. That is what makes it significant that we belong to God. Nothing on earth is more valuable than He paid the highest price for it. He wants it. Protected, especially from devastating damages in the world. He knew that divisions will come. That conflict will come. That disharmony will come. But he still said, Stay as one. When God put together all kind of animals in the ark, they did all kind of stuff in there. They, they did all kind of stuff in there. The windows are shut. They put there. They Definitely become so stinky. And yet, but yet they were in. Because if they go out, never they are there. Because those who were outside couldn't survive it. Now they remain in the earth. No matter how messy, sticky, no go The church may be. Stay in the earth. 
remain in the family. Because with time, with time, the windows will be open. With time, the door will be open. With time, we will be resettled back to where we belong. Remember, we will care. You are commissioned by Christ Jesus. Yes, to do everything to preserve unity. Protect the fellowship. Promote harmony in the church family. And among all believers. This is God's duty for you and I. Because we are family. Amen. Amen. Amen.